I took Video Copilot's Saber plugin and recreated my favorite presets with native effects. No plugins. In this After Effects tutorial, I'm gonna show you how easily you can do the same with my free After Effects template and even apply it to any footage you like. But the newest feature is that you can throw in footage with multiple colors that my template instantly adopts. Endless possibilities to create your own glow effect style. I silently published the monocolor version last year on my selling platform account. I didn't mention it here on my YouTube channel because I wasn't even sure if there was a need for it when there is already Video Copilot's great Saber plugin available. But to my surprise, it's my most downloaded item yet. And this time, I don't want to withhold it from you. The technique behind this is still based on my You Don't Need the Saber Plugin tutorial, where I already talked about the pros and cons of having a plugin free version. But hey, can Saber handle gradient strokes as well? Now, let's dive into After Effects so I can show you how my template works. I'll start with a quick overview for those who cannot wait to use it. Right now, I'm in the Glow FX MC composition. MC stands for multicolor. And these are the layers that you'll see when you open the basic version you can download for free. Each layer contains a glow preset. Here, it's the imitation of the Saber's default, core, and energize preset. If the basic version works for you and you seek for more styles, then you can have them in the extended version with even more Saber clones like the Kryptonite, the Nebula, the Ghost, the Hot, the Star Killer, and the Meteor preset. And the sign labeled layers are glow effect styles of my own creation. And they can be a starting point to design your own glow effects preset. Select one of the presets, duplicate it, and to keep it clear, rename the layer name and the marker, let's say to my preset. Then open it, and the first thing that pops up into your eyes are the essential properties. In this group, you'll find all the parameters you need to create your own personal glow effect. The only thing I have to explain to you for now is that you have to right-click on text to edit the text. And as for the other parameters, just play around with them and see what happens. Most of them are self-explanatory. Just experiment around with the turbulent settings and the glow values until you're happy with the result. Then you can send the glow effects MC composition to Media Encoder or to the Render Queue. But you're not bound to this composition. You can copy-paste it into any other composition you're working on and render from there. What about changing the font or using graphics or footage other than text? And footage that is even multicolored. Before I get into it and also explain what each turbulence and glow parameter is doing, let me briefly show you how my template works technically. As I said before, my template is based on the same technique I showed in my You Don't Need the Saber plugin tutorial, but I made a customizable template out of it. I did this by bundling all the important parameters from the effects I used, essential to adjust the glow, into one place using essential graphics. This way, you don't need to fight through all the subcoms and effects to get to the attributes you need to change. Maybe you ask yourself, why didn't this guy simply link the attributes to expression controllers? Well, thanks to essential graphics, each preset layer is just a derivative of one and the same composition, which is this layer, GlowFX MC 4K Edit. This becomes obvious when I click on layer name, because now we can see that every layer has the same name and origin. Essential graphics makes it possible that each layer can have their own glow effect settings, while the base composition with all its subcoms remain untouched. So you can create as many presets you want without producing multiple duplicates of the compositions and their associated subcoms. Really cool to keep your project window tidy. Now, let's create a Saber preset to better understand what each parameter is for. I'm gonna paste a black solid and a text into the composition that was already in my memory cache. Then I'm gonna look for Saber and apply it to the black solid. I'm gonna change the core type to text layer and set text layer to my text layer. 
Then I'm gonna select a preset, let's say the Nebula preset. As I showed you before, you can go into the layer and start to edit the parameters. But there is another way. And this requires the essential graphics window to be opened from the window menu. When you don't see anything here, make sure that primary is set to Glow Effects MC for K Edit. Also, turn off all layers except of the Glow Effects MC layer. And instead of twirling down the layer hierarchy, you can edit the glow comfortably here with instant access to the parameters and with bigger controls. When you want to edit the core preset for example, then open the layer and click on the right push to primary icon of the essential graphics group which transfers the settings to the primary composition. You can do this with any other preset and then you can start to edit the glow in the essential graphics window. But let's start from scratch with the default preset. You can change the text here. And contrary to the essential graphics properties in the layer, you can also change the font, the size, and even the faux styles. By the way, I use the free Google font Titillium here. Let's blatantly copy the color from Saber and paste it into the text color. Then increase the stroke width to 30. In the turbulence settings, increase the fractal scale to 475. When you don't see any effect, increase the fractal contrast to see any structure. With a high contrast, you'll have a distinctive texture. But because we want it rather soft, let's decrease it to 250. Then change the fractal type to swirly and keep the noise type to soft linear. In a nutshell, you set the basic look of the glow effect with a fractal and noise type. When we hit play, it'll look like this. Maybe we can increase the animation speed a bit. In the first turbulence settings, increase the size to 110. And to notice any effect, you have to increase the turbulence amount to 85. But set the turbulence displacement to twist. To sum it up, with the first turbulence settings, you not only add some extra distortion, but also some directional movement to the overall fractal noise. As the name of this property suggests, you can make the turbulence look more complex, but let's leave it to 5 here. In the second turbulence settings, increase the size to 30 and the amount to 115. This not only adds a distorted stroke around the original unaffected stroke, which is good for an electric or fiery look, it also affects the overall fractal noise to make the glow more coherent. Let's leave the second turbulence displacement to turbulent and increase the turbulence opacity to 75%, making the stroke distortions more visible. And finally, in the turbulence settings, increase the core turbulence size to 20 and the core turbulence amount to 80, also giving the original stroke some distortions. So, the second turbulence settings are responsible for the distortions directly influencing the stroke. Let's close the turbulence settings and move on to the glow settings. Copy paste the text color into the core color, but make it brighter like this. The core reduction parameter simply thins out the original stroke, resulting in interesting highlights when distorted. But in our case, let's leave it to zero. And to achieve this smoky nebula look, increase the core blur to 7 to smooth everything out. Then decrease the inner glow settings to 10. The inner glow property is responsible for the glow closer to the stroke. Also, decrease the outer glow to 15. With the gamma correction parameter, you can increase the contrast when it's below the value 1, making the glow kind of sharper. When above 1, you can even increase the outer glow. Let's set it to 1,3. And to get the color right, we can shift the hue to negative 28 degrees, the saturation to negative 28 as well, and the glow threshold to 0%. With Boost Glow, you can enhance the glow, especially the glow around the core becomes brighter, but we don't need it here. And it seems that the original Nebula preset has a crispier fractal noise. To achieve this in our glow, let's decrease the first turbulence size to 10 and the second turbulence complexity to 4. How do you like it? Not a 100% match, but at least very similar. Okay. Now, how do we actually apply the glow effects to multicolored graphics? In the project window, you can find the composition where you insert your own footage into. 
double click on it and you'll find some of these examples of multicolored graphics. As you can see, the strokes are very thin. I recommend to start with a very small stroke width, barely noticeable. I'm gonna lock this composition, open the main Glow Effects MC composition, lock it as well, and snap the footage composition into the right border so we can see both compositions side by side. The only thing we need to do is click on the toggle between text and footage property to apply the Glow Effects to what's inside the footage composition. As you can see, some graphics won't work with certain presets, but they could work with other presets instead. Feel free to try them all out. You'll get some funny results sometimes. The Eternal preset works definitely with Mr. Spock. Looks like the transporter effect. The Thing works with the Thing preset and the default preset is perfect for the logo animation. But you can also use live action footage. Let's apply the core preset to it. I recommend to use isolated objects or persons. To make it usable for the glow effects template, I'm gonna apply a key light effect to it. Add the find edges effect, then the invert effect. And finally, apply the unmalt effect, a free plugin that makes all black parts transparent. Then insert a curves effect before the find edges effect and increase the contrast drastically. You can see how my template adopts all the colors. And if you want to return to a monocolor version, you can add a tint effect to the footage and set the color. And in this case, it's better to have the curves effect after the find edges effect. If needed, adjust the curve to make the glow effects come out better. And that's it guys. Download my template for free, have fun with it, experiment with it, and please tell me what you think about it. See you next time.